afternoon, everybody. Congrats, Wes. Um, I just wonder what what got you from maybe going away from basketball as a life toward basketball as a life when you were a young man. Well, obviously, the uh, you know you still have that competitive spirit. You know, I, I played a at a Division three school. Um, you know, it's no different. You put your heart, you pour everything into it. Um, and I, I think, you know, once that's taken away, you take that step away from graduation, you're, tri you're still trying to find avenues to be a part of that. Uh, it wasn't in the cards at first. Um, the, the whole thought process, and I shared this with Tommy, was to take a year off, uh, go back to grad school, and, uh, you know, move on. Uh, I was obviously had the blessing of uh, a father who worked in sports, so he gave me the opportunity to uh, get an internship and, uh, you know, and, and they worked me like a dog. So, uh, <laughs> but it paid off. And, and, and a lot of those valuable experiences, are, uh, I think, helped propel, prepare me uh, for this opportunity. Um, so it's, you know, you have that fire, you have that competitive nature, and you just want to find ways to still, you know, quench that thirst. Uh, so as you, you know, gain momentum, uh, from whether it's the advanced scouting, moving uh, as a uh, fifth, fourth assistant, being around it. It just still it still burns, and I think you uh, want to continue that path. So, our friend Phil Chenier uh, shared with me that uh, a conversation you had with your your father, and your, your father said, "Well, he he wants to stop, but there's going to be no shortcuts." And Phil said he probably worked you harder than anybody else, and I think we could all probably agree on that. Uh, as always, David, thank you for the question. Kareem Copeland, Kareem, you're next if you have a question. Hey, everybody. Um, Kareem Gopin, Washington, uh, Washington Post. Nice to meet you, Wes. Nice to meet you. I want to ask, you know, you, you briefly talked about, you know, absorbing these lessons over the years. And, you know, you've had so many stops and dealt with, um, you know, so many kind of incredible people that have kind of come through your life. I'm curious, what are some of the biggest things that you kind of always said, OK, when I get this chance, this is how I want to do it in this way, or some of the biggest things that you've kind of carried over the years that you've always wanted to implement? Well, I think the, the most uh, important thing is you have to be authentic. I, I can't pretend uh, to be someone I'm not. Um, I think you have to, those relationships will they'll develop organically. Um, and I think when that happens, it allows you to get through some of those tough, tough stretches. Because uh, we all know through 82 game season, there are going to be some tough stretches. And that's just the nature of the league, nature of the business. Um, but uh, you just have to be yourself. You have to find your own voice, um, be comfortable in your own skin, and, and coach the way you feel fits your, your roster and your team. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we go to Darren Haynes. Darren? Hey, Coach. Darren Haynes, WSA 9. Uh, congratulations on the opportunity. Um, if you can share, what was that moment like? when you got that call or whenever it was face to face, when you got the job, what was the reaction like for yourself or maybe even the family around you? Honestly, it was a uh, surreal feeling, um, almost a feeling of disbelief. I know that it might sound crazy. Um, going throughout this process, and you know, I've been through the process with other teams over the last three years. Um, and at times you felt like you were close. So you never wanted to jump ahead of yourself um, until you actually got that call. So it, it's always that internal battle of being excited, but not too excited. Um, Tommy and I have been talking five, six times a day. So to see his, you know, his name pop up was not extraordinary until he said what he said. And literally, it's like you're frozen there for a minute, you know, trying to absorb it. Um, and then, of course, the, all the, you know, the emotions, the, uh, even think about all the logistics, you know, the family dynamic, all of that kind of, rushes in, you're like, wow, okay. Um, but for a brief moment, there, there's that sense of relief, of joy, um, excitement, and a little bit of trepidation, I'll be honest. It's, this is new. Um, so it's, it's, it's a new life for me, it's a new experience, and it's, it's one that I'm gonna grasp and really uh, take hold of. By the way, uh, Wes mentioned a Division three school earlier. I was just reminded, the John, not just any Division three school, the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays, he's a proud. I went to Towson. I couldn't even spell Johns Hopkins, so that's that's impressive that you could do that. Let's uh, let's go to uh, Fred Katz. Fred. Hi, Wes. Fred Katz from the. Um, I'm curious. 
During your time in Washington, maybe four years, you went through a lot of offensive qualities as an assistant coach. And by the time you get to you're more of a kind of guy, how did that transformation uh, kind of take shape for you? And do you consider yourself a special out of the ball? Didn't quite grab well, I was going to say, Wes, just you can say whatever you want now because <laughs> no one heard the question. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I think the uh, <laughs> defensive side of the ball was. Yeah, I think, yeah I apologize. Well, I, you know, it's funny. The, uh, the way that whole thing developed for us uh, was kind of a happenstance. Um, and once again, Coach Malone kind of thrust this upon me, and we at that time were a poor defensive team. So. I'm not going to sit up here and say it was just me. I think the biggest credit goes to the guys. They're the ones that have to do it. And that goes back to the buy-in, uh, the accountability, and they allowed me to coach them. Uh, so schematically, you can come up with whatever. But, uh, you know, are you doing it right? Are you doing it with effort? Um, are you doing it together? Uh, but we're allowed to coach. So it's, yes, you may be in charge of a certain area, but we're all basketball coaches. So I'm not concerned about the offensive end, the defensive end. It's 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 basketball, and obviously you want to put your your players in the best light to have the most success. Our next question from uh, Ohm Young Masik from ESPN. Ohm. I apologize. Hey Wes, uh, congrats on getting job um, and returning to DC. I was wondering, um, what is your vision for Bradley Beal, Russell Westbrook? How you envision them playing together, and what did you learn about having Jokic and Murray, another star duo, that might help you guide with those two? Well, yeah, it's funny. I had great conversations with uh, with both of those guys, um, and I felt like I was talking to the same person. And I and I say that because the message was clear that the. Uh, they want to be coached. Um, I think that they're looking for the accountability. Um, they're excited for this new opportunity. Um, and I think they both know. I mean, offense is not the, not, not the issue right now. So they, there's buy-in right now. And we'll see as we get into training camp and, and the preseason, there has to be carryover. So I think you know there, there's an alignment there in thought. And I think we're all on the same page as what, what's going to be required of them. But uh, the, the best part about that is both of them, as, as leaders of this team, are committed to uh, being better on that end. We continue welcoming home Wes Unsell Jr. with questions from the media. Uh, Matt Paris, I believe. Matt, you're next. Matt? Hi, Wes. Hi, In what way do you think your father in coaching you? I didn't hear that question. I apologize. Matt, you repeat it? Yeah. Yeah. What way do you think your father in coaching coaching? Still didn't get it. I'm trying. I'm working a remote here, but I'm probably opening a garage door on Wisconsin Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt, yeah, may, may, maybe if Matt could text it to uh, Scott Hall. So, uh, Matt, if you could text the question, we'll get to that. Kellen yeah, Song is next. Kellen, you there? Yes, yes. Uh, congratulations. Um, um, you mentioned this, but what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? How the team is going to start and you mentioned you, you spoke with Bradley and uh, Russ. Have you spoken to other players as well? The players. Um, Tommy was gracious enough to give me like a, a roll of deck of numbers. But uh, a few guys are in town um, working out. I was able to bump into a few of them today. Uh, so that you know that's the first part, uh, being able to put faces and names together, let them, you know, feel at ease with this new situation, um, and just let, let them know, uh, you know my vision and my expectations. And I think uh, everyone, myself included, we're eager to get to work, get to know each other, um, and really trying to generate that chemistry that we're going to need going forward. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Focus TV. As you guys heard the introductory, uh, just a snippet of the introductory press conference for our new Washington Wizards head coach, Wes Unseld Jr. Um, as always, with Octavia White here, Cardo Dudley Jr., Raymond Lyons, and Wilson Tarvey Jr., once again, welcome to the Focus TV. We got a lot to get through this week. Um, so we're going to start with the Wizards before we get to, we're going to touch on the finals. Cardo got some update for you guys on Peach Jam. Uh, DC United is one of those weeks. There's three games. Feels like seven days. Um, so fun for them. Olympics starts this weekend and get into some of what's going on with USA basketball, the men's and the women's side on the exhibition schedule, taking 
L's and whatnot. And if it's doomsday scenario or not, we're going to get into all that and more. I got the 9450 breakdown as well. So uh, as far as the Wizards go, I tell you, I know Raymond Cardo and myself, we've already talked about this a little bit. But just want to hear your initial thoughts on, um, you know, the higher West Unsettled Junior. Um, I think the first thing that always sticks out to me is that I'm I'm always happy when a black man gets an opportunity. I know we've been talking about this um, over the past couple of years about, you know, there being so many great African-American assistant coaches and everything in the league and a lot of them not really getting a chance to shine. So I'm number one, very, very happy to see that another one was able to get his just due and get his opportunity. Um, secondly, it's just great to also see it come full circle for him, you know, being a scout for the Wizards uh, back in the day and to be able to bring it all the way back home to, to now being the head coach just shows you, you know, the dedication and, you know, the, the determination to, to get where he wanted to be. Um, I, I actually think it's an excellent hire for the Wizards. Um, we all know that, you know, their issues stem to seem to stem from the defensive side of the ball as well as, you know, their presence down low. And I think that he's going to be a good fit to be able to address both of those needs immediately. Um, I liked in the presser that they were also able, you know, he was able to touch on the fact that he's already spoken with Brad. He's already spoken with Russ, as we know, those are the two cornerstone pieces as of now um, for them to start, you know, getting ready for next year, because it's going to take time for them to, build up what they want, you know, their team to look like. And like he also said, just to get everybody to buy in. So starting off with the two cornerstone pieces is definitely going to be the first way to go. But, I, I, you know, we talked earlier before that we even, they even decided to let Scott Brooks go um, that, you know, we didn't think it would happen, but as we see it did. Um, but I'm just really, really happy that, you know, he's able to get that opportunity and hopefully he's able to, you know, build the Wizards back up, you know, uh, looking at the finals now with teams, you know, the Suns and the Bucks and how long it's been since they were in the finals and the drought that they went through. Um, the Washington, D.C. area is going through a similar one. Um, so it would be great for him to be able to build, you know, the team and the franchise back to a great place. Carter, on the right, did you guys have anything you guys wanted to add? about the hire. I know we talked about it a little bit the other day on Wizards Outlook, but you have the opportunity if you wanted to add anything. Just, like I said, I just want, I just hope they let them rock and let them coach. You know, the thing in the NBA is that, you know, low key they're hiring guys that they micromanage, you know, that they're, you know, kind of basically being the mouthpiece for the front office. And um, I don't think that's the way to go. Not saying he is, I, I'm just hoping that's not the case. That's not the reason why they, you know, they gave him a job. They got a man here to try to take control. Let him do what he do. You hired him for a reason. He's proven. You know, paid his dues. Let, let, let him coach. That's my thing. And also, right. uh, real quick, uh, not, not, not necessarily, not necessarily. But I'll tell you, I don't want the, I don't want the WBA fans getting at us. Uh, the, yeah, the Missies won a championship in the last couple of years, so. I, I'm, I sorry, right. the, I'm, the, sorry. The, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, yes. Yeah. Directly result. But bullets, wizards. Saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please they, do not kill me. Yes, Mystics. I yes. Everybody, <laughs> everybody else excited for the Wizards and the Washington football team. How about I just say that because we know yes, the the Caps, the Nats, um, the the Mystics have all brought home championships. So I'm sorry. I specifically men in the NBA. I apologize. <laughs> That's what you call teamwork, right there. Ray, you got anything you want to add on West Coast? So Nah, I just think it's hilarious that they actually had to walk through that. It was it was clear what she was talking about. I just found that very funny. People are just, funny, man. Somebody would have came for me. No, I know I know they was waiting. And I, I know exactly why he did that. And I know they was They're waiting. Right man. The the, the show. Show. Keep, 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 keep the trolls under the bridge, man. Like uh, they I'm sorry. Hard. The bullets and the wizard franchise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get back to the bullet hey, names, okay? The Mugly fans just they look for a reason, man. Just anything. Man. And that's all. Like you are paying us to the men. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm trying to break it up. You know, 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 you
My bad, man. I ain't mean to sidetrack like that. That was just funny, though. Yeah, look, man, you good. People have been watching for a while. This is what happens here. It's fine. <laughs> Got a natural progression of how we get through the show plan. It's just a suggestion. <laughs> we'll get to where we need to get to as we get there. Um, but, yeah, it's for, uh, for Coach West, man. Um, it's a good look. Like, again, for me, I just want to see, like, yay, it's cool, new hire. I'm over it already. Ready, you know, the draft's the 29th. I want to see what happens next. And then after that, you know, I'm focused on the stuff that can actually happen. Um, cause right now it's just words and I'm not talking about him. It's about like from the player side, like it's just words and that's cool. I don't care. I heard words when other coach was here. It, it means nothing to me. So, you know, as Octavia said, you know, there's a couple franchises in the city that have won some things. It's, it's been a while guys. It's, it's been a while. So, um, again, actually speak louder to words is what I'm looking forward to. It's a good hire, like Cardell said, hopefully they let the man do what he came here to do and give him a chance to try to get this thing pointed in the right direction, even though you're kind of under the gun because of some contractual situations. But again, Wizards Outlook, definitely keep an eye on that. We talk, we take the time there to go in great lengths about the cap situation of your Washington Wizards and how that uh, impacts free agency and things of that nature. Let's get to the NBA Finals, though. Um, so Ray and, uh, Ray and I'll tell you, we won't start with you guys. Um, yeah, let me know, go ahead and get it out now. now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As we talked about before sure, y'all got on here. Yeah, it's a wrap. I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's cool. I can always admit when I'm wrong. I have no issues with doing that. It's, I mean, I honestly felt like I thought that they would be able to bounce back and counteract the changes and what the Bucks did, but they're not. And um, as much as we used to kill um, Chris Middleton, you can't really say nothing about him at all. <laughs> like he's been showing up. He's been a, he's been locked in, ready to go. And Giannis has just been doing everything. You know, he's been everywhere. Drew Holiday, like all three of them, are equally putting in work for this. You can see how much they want it. And on the flip side, it's it's looking like the complete opposite. You know, I I thought Chris Paul had a great um, playoff run this year um but he's gotten a lot sloppier you know obviously the defensive pressure that drew holiday is putting on him is definitely working and they've stuck with it you know my only concern with the bucks for most of the series that, that they played in is just that they find the right things to do but then they end up doing something else even though what they were already doing was already working so I thought that possibly that trend would continue, but obviously it hasn't. You know, they've stuck to what they need to do, and they, there's no answer for Giannis at this point. DeAndre Ayton can't stop him. Um, and then again, there's nobody behind DeAndre Ayton that can really help him when he comes out of the game. It, it's just been, you know, and then they let one slip away. You know, they they started off great, the Suns did in, in the last game, and it didn't even affect the Bucks. it looked like. And, you know, it's obviously coming down to a lot of playoff and, you know, experience that the Bucks have versus the Suns, you know, and a lot of uncharacteristic things are happening for the Suns. And I would be shocked if the C the series isn't over tonight. I would say there's still an opportunity, you know, I was just, you yeah, know, it is, it but I, I would be shocked. I would be shocked if the Phoenix Suns can, can really grab, get it all the way back on track. And when in Milwaukee, um, when Milwaukee has the chance to close it out on their home floor in front of their home fans and be done and over with it, you know, uh, they're going to need like a near flawless, unless something like, again, anything can happen. We know it's the playoffs. Anything can happen. It's the finals. Um, but I will be really shocked if, if they don't wrap it up tonight. All right. Ray, your thoughts on the series so far as we head into game six? Um, yeah, man, it's it's been a great series so far, and you know Milwaukee's on the verge of um of a championship. You know, it's well deserved. They've been playing great. You know, they've been taking advantage of their opportunities. They've been executing better than Phoenix. Um, you know, and just been more consistent all around. Uh, I mean, Giannis, what he's doing is self-explanatory. You know, we can talk about free throws. We can talk about all this other stuff, but. You know, the results are speaking for themselves. Uh, Middleton, you know, like Octavia brought up, 
You know, when he hasn't performed, we talked about it. And now that he's performing, we're going to talk about that. Because throughout this whole playoffs, he's been stepping up, you know, and just doing what we've expected him to do the whole time. Like, you know, if, if we didn't think he was capable, I don't think we would hold him to those standards because that just doesn't make sense. You know, we, we know what type of player he is. Is you know we know his potential and what he can do and he and he's been doing it. Um, Drew Holiday and PJ Tucker have been th- those were key additions for them, you know, and we're and we're seeing why they're just what it, what they're able to do defensively and just disrupt people, you know, is is amazing. Uh, Chris Paul, his his run up to this point, you know, has been great, and then, and the one thing that has been standing out is his lack of turnovers. Um, in this series, he's been turned the ball over, and that's because Drew Holiday has been in his jersey. So, um, you know, it's it, it's hard to, you know, execute like that. As great as Chris Paul is, I mean, that's that's a tough task. We all know what type of monster Drew Holiday is on the defensive end, and you know he's been he's been showing all of that. You know, even last game, you know, when uh, Devin Booker was getting off. Uh, Drew Holiday switched on to him and kind of shut that water off just for enough time for um, for Milwaukee to get the win. Then, of course, the play that sealed the game, you know, stripped him clean. Then the oop to Giannis. I mean, that's, the, that's, that's one of those plays that's going to live on for a long time. You know, that was, that was big time right there. Uh, you know, even look at the clip now, picking Chris Paul up 94 feet, you know, not letting him breathe, not letting him kind of get comfortable. I mean, those, those are the little things you need to – to secure a championship, you know, and they're doing the verge. They won three in a row, you know, um, Phoenix, they got to come out with a level of desperation. I don't think they've shown yet. So, um, you know, it, it, it's on, it's on them, man, whether they want to go home early on that or, or push this thing to game seven. But, um, but yeah, in Milwaukee, they, they look hungry. Look like they can smell it. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they come out here and close this thing out. Um, you know, and I wouldn't be shocked if Phoenix uh, pushes it to uh, to another game because you know it's not like they've just been getting extremely dominated throughout the series, but um, but Milwaukee's they they just been doing the things they need to do to win these games. So, you know, we'll see, man. You know whether um, whether it's, whether the NBA season ends tonight or or we get the two greatest words of sports, Game Seven. They need to come on, man. Ready for this off season to get started. Got too much stuff going on at what time, man? It's a <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind one more game. I'm just gonna say, but <laughs> look, man, I'm I'm good. I won't wake up and it'd be over. Go ahead, Carter. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, Wilson, I'll be completely yeah, honest. So I love basketball. So keep going, but no, no, it's uh for me. My bad for laughing, man. Drew Holiday just made his uh shooting coach turn around, man. So he went uh. Uh, I, it, it's what I said. They're the first time matchup, son. Uh, you know, they're, they're big three. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the two main things is how Drew Holiday is wore down Chris Paul and, um, and how Giannis has completely taken DeAndre Aiden out of the series, man. Like, I, I go back to game two when Giannis drove and, you know, DeAndre Aiden slid and, 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 and Giannis put his shoulder into him, rocked him back three feet, then he dunked it. To me, DeAndre ain't been the same. His his his, his mentality ain't been the same since. Because to me, those type of plays is one of those plays where the world may not realize it unless you are real. You like you played enough basketball, you want you will get it. Those those plays is where Giannis and DeAndre know who who, who the better play is. Like you have no answer for me, so don't even try. And and so and that's what it's been the last few games. He, he's saying more on the perimeter. He's crashing the Bulls, but I'm talking about being aggressive offensively and trying to go back at Giannis. It's been – he hasn't done that. And with Drew Holiday harassing Chris Paul, it's limited his easy touches to get him in the rhythm to get him going. You know what I mean? And that and that and and that's the big that's the big thing. You know, that's what – I that's the – that was the thing that a lot of teams struggled with throughout the playoffs that made the Suns get to this point. They, they couldn't – Booker gonna get his, you know what I'm saying? But they couldn't, they couldn't stop Chris Paul because when he's scoring and getting everybody else involved, I mean, you saw what the Suns could do. You know what I'm saying? It's even in this series, the first two games, they were in the rhythm. Guys were hitting threes, the role players. 
But ever since they put Drew Holiday and made Chris Paul work and wore him down, and stuff, DeAndre Ayton has uh, faded, and the role players have faded. They may have spurts in like certain quarters where they're hitting threes and hitting shots, but they can't sustain it like they did in the first two games. And it puts more pressure on Devin Booker to have to drop 40 points. Like he's been dropping multiple 40 points uh, a game, and they still lose him. That tells you all you need to know. But that's what also worries me because I'm worried about him. They've been close games with him losing, scoring 40, and them losing. But what's worrying me is I hope he don't, for the Bucks' sake, I hope he don't figure out how to squeeze a few more points out the situation. You know what I mean? Because then that could be he could figure out how to win this game and get it back to Phoenix. And that's what the great scores do, the, you know, the, the Jordans, the, the the KDs, the Kobe's, guys like that. You know what I mean? They'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And that's the next step for him. It may not, you know, and they better hope it's not tonight because if they get back to Phoenix, the Bucks in trouble. So if, I, if I'm them, I'm trying to <laughs> get in this tonight, man, because you don't want to give a team life when you got them on the ropes, man. You know, especially they got a killer over there. Cause, you know, he's it's as simple as that. So, you know, that's my thing, man. But if they continue to – if the Bucks don't, like Octavia said, they don't beat themselves, man. Like, don't even start with that switch of defense, man. Like, just, 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 <laughs> just play, play the defense. Got you. It's like they team. try it every time, though. The, the, the switch of defense is what got you. Know, too. Like, I, I swear, I hate that stuff. Man. You know, no, they start the game with that every game. I'm like, dog, it, it don't work on this team. You can, <laughs> Chris Paul just gonna snake it and shoot right over Brook Lopez, and, it's, and now you down ten two. And now you got to fight back, and now all of a sudden, I'm broke. it's like, but like, all right, let's play sh- straight up defense. Drew, get over the screen. You, you, you stay with your man. What, do that from jump, man. Why make things different? You see what I'm saying? So that, that's that's my take on it, man. They, they, but my thing is watch Booker, man, because uh, you know I know he gonna he, he gonna be off for of blood, man. And he's capable, man. He he's right there. He's capable. Uh, a few more shots, you know. Hey, man. Because it was dangerously close. Like, it, what if Drew Holiday then didn't, didn't strip him? You know what I mean? That could have been a bucket to put them up. And there might be 3 2 with the sun. It, it's, it's been that close. So, a couple more plays where he make a couple shots to get to the free throw line, it, it, it could easily be the other way. So, they got to watch it. That's dangerous. Yeah, it should be a very exciting game six. I know everyone's going to be tuned in tonight and see if we're going to end up getting a game seven. Because, uh, yeah, the Phoenix crowd looks nuts. And if we think about this series for, for a little while, before game five, nobody went on each other's court. You know, so, you know, the Bucks did it in game five. Uh, yeah. Phoenix does it tonight. Yeah. Then, you know, the trend goes back to, like, again, you know, again, uh, as Cardell said, just even more reason for Milwaukee to, you want to end this tonight. There's no reason. Get back on that plane, go back to Phoenix, and, you know, horrible things happen to you. And like you said about and Buck, uh, the kids been grown up, um, and you know we'll see what happens. But it's it's been a really fun finals. You know, I've seen a lot of stupid stuff out there on social, but y'all y'all need help um, a lot, a lot of help. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, Cardi Hook is gonna update you guys on what's been going on at Peach Jam. Uh, some folks who stood out to him. So uh, you're watching the Focus TV. We will return very shortly. Welcome back to the Focus TV, as promised. Cardell has the latest on Peach Jam. So, sir, the floor is yours. Yep. Okay, I'm trying to get through this as quick as possible. Uh, obviously, Peach Jam, well, actually, the EYBL who play started last week. Peach Jam has started today, and it went in with the championship on Sunday. Uh, I'm going to start things off with the results from who play from DMV Nike programs that are playing in it. Uh, team Durant, Team Mellow, Team Takeover, and I throw Boo Williams in it since they're the resident Virginia team. You know they all qualify for P It's 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 a college like setup, just like the NCAA tournament. All the teams on the circuit, on the Nike circuit, don't get to play in P Jam. You have to qualify. You have to win games, and that what uh, last week was for. You know what I mean? They had a week long, I guess, season. You can call it. You know, obviously with COVID, they didn't have a typical. You know. You know, four sessions over two, three months before you get to Peach Jam to qualify. So they they squeeze it all in the last week. 
and um uh, you know from july 13th to the 19th and you know they, they all four made it you know it, it, it was inconsistent with play for most of the teams they were beating each other up but there were a couple teams that stood out uh blue williams finished five and two in eybo play team durant finished five and oh i'll get more on them later their guard play is just ridiculous right now uh team mellow snuck in with the two and five record and team takeover also barely got in with the two and five record um they began today the i'll have updates on who wins uh the peace jam championship obviously the championship on the nike circuit i'll have an update on that next week on the show and also i'll definitely give you an update on what the local teams did as well but uh standouts is uh i'm gonna start with you the mets uh six foot guard plays for team durant you know transfer from, from gonzaga he would be an old kill he's a pittsburgh commit right now he's just torching the eybl um you know, his combination of, uh, you know, skill, athleticism, and toughness is just overwhelming opponents. Uh, Mets is averaging a team high 23.2 points on 65% shooting from the field, 81% shooting from the line, and 45% shooting from three. Uh, in addition, he's averaging 2.8 assists, 2.7 rebounds, and 1.7 steals a game. Uh, he's playing at a level where he's saying, he basically said no one can deal with him. And so far, no one has been able to figure him out. Uh, and the, the sad part is he's not alone on Team Durant. Next up is uh, Derek Whitehead, another g combo guard. He's 6'5". Uh, he's at Montverde. He's one of the top players in the country. Um, he's proven that on the EYBL P-Sham stage. You know, you know, the combo guard is averaging 17 points, 5.8 rebounds, 2.2 uh, assists, and 1.7 steals per game on 57% shooting from the field, 71% shooting from the line. Um, you know, the way he impacts the game in so many ways is why he's so coveted. He can play point and shooting guard both effectively and defend one through three due to his size length, uh, his athleticism and strength. You know, if he improves his, his three ball right now, he's shooting 25% from deep. You know, he's a little inconsistent with that. But if he improves that, he has all the makers of, you know, being a daily all-around common guard, not just at the net, you know, at the college level, but the league as well. You know, he, he's able to hit the three consistently. The league will be calling for him very soon, you know, when he get to college. Um, Cam Whitmore, I keep saying this kid's name, uh, 664, plays with Team Mello, an Archbishop Spalding, you know, high flying forward. Uh, he needs no introduction to this program. I've talked, to him, I've talked about him too much. Uh, he's turning his head and he's down right now with his versatility. Uh, he has NBA dunk contest level athleticism. I keep saying that. And his his perimeter skills rapidly improving. Uh, Wilmore's leading team Melo on points per game with 16.1 rebounds, seven seven and a half steals, 1.8 and blocks. For one, uh, his his efficiency shooting the ball has been his main issue down at PGM. Uh, he's shooting 49% from the field, which is great, but he's shooting 50% from the free throw line and 19% from deep. So you know Melo needs him to quickly. <laughs> get better with that in that area so they can try to make a run towards the championship. But all in all, he's a supreme talent, man. He's one of the more coveted players in the country, definitely in the DMV and, you know, the Baltimore, the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area. Uh, you know, his athleticism, his balance, his strength and everything, the way he plays in there is just ridiculous, man. You know, he could, he could literally, you know, athletic-wise can fit in in the league right now and, and belong. You know what I'm saying? It's just the other things, the intangibles, the skill, the IQ, getting all that up the part. But physically and athletically, he's already there. And as far as the best of the rest, Doug McDaniel, point guard, six-foot point guard, plays for team takeover. He's at Paul to six. He's a Michigan commit. He averaged 13.9 points, 3.8 assists, 3.8 rebounds, and 2.1 steals, 40% uh, shooting from three-point range. Uh, Tyra Ward. Uh, Boo Williams for plays at the Matha. He's an Xavier commit. He averaged 13 points, 4.9 rebounds, and 1.2 steals per game. And uh, Rodney Rice is the third guard for Team Durant. Uh, six four guard plays at the Matha as well, averaging 15.8 points, 2.3 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 55% uh, shooting from the field, 75% shooting from the line, 39% shooting from deep. So, yes, Rodney Rice, Judah Mess, and Derek Whitehead are the starting backcourt for team Durant, and that's why they're undefeated right now uh we all know how important guard play is in these type of settings definitely aau the ncaa tournament and whatnot hell even in the NBA, you see what's going on right now in the finals so they have three monsters that 
play off one another. They could do a lot of things on both ends and in a variety of ways. And and teams are struggling to deal with it right now. So that's why they're one of the favorites to possibly win it all. You know, but I'll keep y'all posted. All right, real quick, nine four fifty breakdown followed by our second break. Uh, Jamal Hayward this week will be breaking down uh, one foot fade back short jumper. Again, it's a one foot fade back short jumper. See you guys on the other side of the break in 9450 breakdown. Uh, today we're going to work on a finishing move uh, using the opposite foot going either way. Um, so I'll be driving left and I'll be driving right. Um, it is a small little, a short little jump shot off out of the lane, outside of the lane, um, depending on how you drive and how you take the driving angle. Uh, if you're using the glasses, you're going to offer it too. So, you're going to start from the top of Breaking it down right now. So, if I'm driving here, I'm driving here, I swing move here. So, I'm stuck with my left foot, and then my last step is with my right foot. Once I take that step with my right foot, I jump, but I'm fading back, and I'm using the glass. Okay? So, again, we're also do it again. Step, step, as my defender runs past me to cut me off, I fade back, I shoot up the glass. So, same thing, going the other way. Foot, fade back, use the glass. So, here it is, game speed. opposite foot going either way. Um, so I'll be driving left and then I'll be driving right. Um, it is a small little, a short little jump shot off out of the lane, outside of the lane, um, depending on how you drive and how you take the driving angle. Uh, if you're using glasses, you're going to offer it too. So you're going to start from the top of the Breaking it down right now. So if I'm driving here, I'm driving here, I swing over here. So I'm stuck with my left foot and then my last step is with my right foot. Once I take that step with my right foot, I jump, but I'm fading back, and I'm using the glass, okay? So, again, we we'll also do it again. Step, step, as my defender runs past me to cut me off, I fade back, I shoot up the glass. So, same thing, going the other way. Walk through it, here, step, right foot, left foot, fade back, use the glass. So, here it is, game speed. On the other way, remember this is not jumping up the left foot. Welcome back to the Focus TV. As always, special thanks to Jamal Hayward for knocking out the 9450 breakdown each and every week. Quick update on DC United. Uh, the Black Arrest suffered a 2 1 road defeat against Philadelphia um, this past weekend. The issues in this one were in transition. Uh, the Union did a, good, uh, did a great job on both of their goals uh, on a counterattack. They evaded the press and they were off to the races both times. DC United defender ended up a little bit out of place. On the first goal, it was Andy Nahar that stepped up a bit high. Uh, on the right side of the field. And once Bazio, uh, once Bazio won the ball, the start of the counter, a couple passes later, got the ball out to Sergio Santos. You know, he was by himself and he did what he gets paid to do. He put the ball in the back of the net. Uh, on the second goal, Tony Alfaro went up a little bit, beat a defender, was looking to make a pass, got dispossessed. Um, and then uh, God's dog placed a nice ball over the top to Santos, who fed for Zbilko for the go-ahead goal. And in fun times because soccer is oh so much fun. So at the 87th minute, you know, it was a weather delay because of lightning in the area. Uh, some 90 plus minutes later, the game resumed. 
if the if the weather delay had occurred in the 90th minute, would be able to suspend the game, you know, and everyone going about their night. But it happened in the 87th. I mean, you had to wait, outweigh the storm. And then once it was over, they did resume play. It was about maybe five minutes left, even though if you think about the amount of stoppage time, because this was kind of an over, overly physical game, should have been more than five minutes. That said, DC United wasn't able to take advantage um, with the time, the, the allotted time left uh, to provide an equalizer. So they did fall on the road. Um, they have two more games this week, uh, one being tomorrow night uh, on the road in Chicago. And then Sunday, they come back home to host the New York Red Bulls. Chicago's 3-8-2. The Red Bulls are 5-5-2. Five, five um, just some, as far as transactions go, defender Brendan Hines Ike placed on the injured list with a fractured hip socket. And several other players have knocked. And uh, Stephen Burnbaum, who just came back, Russell Canales, Adrian Perez, Nigel Roberta, Andy Nahar, although he's been listed as questionable, according to Washington Post columnist Stephen Goff. Uh, so we'll see who's available for tomorrow's game in Chicago. Um, keep in mind, a uh, couple uh, couple members of the team in Paul Areola and Donovan Pines are currently with the U.S. Men's National Team for the Gold Cup. Um, DC United did a little bit of shuffling because with Roberta Hurt and Kamara previously out in the uh, at after that weather delay, Roberta got hurt earlier in that game. They didn't have any forwards on their bench, so they, they had to play that last five minutes with like a a defender up top just so someone some, just so they had someone to play the ball in um, to try to target. So you know they they were down bad and as far as forwards go, so they recalled forward. Uh, Giovanni Bolivar from Loudon, and then they loaned Eric Sorga to Loudon. Um, so we'll see what happens again. They got a game on Wednesday, Sunday, so we've got lots to update you guys with next week as far as DC United goes. Uh, USA basketball, we, we've talked about this a little bit between Cardell Ray and myself. We talked about this last week with Octavia. Uh, you know, they wrapped up the exhibition slate, uh, the women's national team this past week. They lost to Australia 70 to 67. Uh, the men's game against Australia was canceled. Um, on the 18th, the women beat Nigeria, uh, 93 to 62. The men beat Spain, 83 to 76. Um, you know, as they go over, you know, the next the next game actually we'll see is group play. Uh, the men are in Group A with France, Iran, and uh, the Czech Republic. The women are in Group B with Japan, Nigeria, and France. Um, the women start on the 27th, their first group stage games against Nigeria, who they just saw, and then the men start their first group stage being against France. So we got 8 a, 8 a.m. start time for the men, 12.40 a.m. start time for the women. We are all looking forward to staying up late and or getting up early to watch these games and talk about them with you all. But I want to ask you guys, after the exhibition slate, how do you guys feel about the respective teams? We'll start with the women's and then the men's. Uh, Octavia, we'll start with you and Ryan Cardo. Um, I mean, I think the women's definitely ended off on a good note against Nigeria, especially since they're going to see them as the first group play game as well. Um, I think in the last game with them, they were able to dominate inside. You know, Brittany Griner was all there, uh, Tina Charles. Uh, I can't think of the name in my head right now, but they, they just played, they played really, really well together during that game. Again, I still feel like, you know, them missing De uh, Diana Taurasi, you know, holding her out, you know, it's going to be interesting to see when she finally gets in the mix um, as I'm sure they can't wait for that as well. But all in all, I think they had a good, you know, exhibition run out there in Vegas. I think they're gelling together better. And I think they're all finding their place and are all finding, you know, what works best, for them, you know, they got a a great one as a head coach and Don, and I just foresee them, you know, being able to, you know, theoretically bring the goal home. You know, like I know it's going to be tough. You know, it's not easy. It's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be a cakewalk for them. Um, but I feel like they have a lot of, you know, veterans that have gone through the process before. Um, they have a lot of newbies as well that you know are going to be able to fit right in with them. Um, so I'm really excited for the group play to start for them. Again, I'm just excited for any sports to continue to come on my TV. Um, so I'm just at this point ready for it to get started and them to stop playing with our emotions um, with these possibilities of canceling Olympics and things that they're throwing out there. But as of now, it seems like everything is good to go. Um, so I'm just ready for it to get started. All right, right. Yeah, um, the women, you know, I, I was never really too worried about them. Um, you know, they did drop one against Australia, but 
is they're just working out kinks. I mean, it's a it's a new team. They got a lot of new players. They're um they're the most talented team in, in Olympic play, and I, I think eventually that um that cream will just rise to the top. You know, they think they pretty much found their identity in their second exhibition game. You know, they're going to play through their front court, which they have pretty much a decisive advantage over every other team. I mean, that's that's just a tough group to deal with. You got, you know, Brittany Griner and Asia Wilson. And then when they're out, you got to deal with Sylvie Files and Team Charles. I mean, that's that that's just hell. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's going to be their um, their point of emphasis to kind of play inside out and to just let things flow that way. And the um, they they just look like they're adjusting well. Uh, it's, it's not a, as big as a learning curve um, for the men's team because for the most part the women are familiar with the international game because they're overseas experience. So um, I, I just think at this point is it's just them learning each other and gelling. Uh, for the men, they um, their last their last two games they they ended on a good note. It looks like they're starting to um, to to make the necessary adjustments. You know, I think. Adding Javel McGee is going to help with their uh, with their issues at center. You know you can't um, you can't really go into a FIBA play with you know your tallest player being six nine. That really doesn't you know play like a true a true five to begin with. So you know that that was um that was a good addition for them. You know and Keldon Johnson he um, he brought some life and some spark to to the team as well. So they they look like they're they're right on the corner. I mean it was. It was never a situation where I just feel like it was going to be disastrous, but um, I I think it was. I always thought it was going to be harder than people realize. You know, for the simple fact that they're not used to these rules, you know, they're not used to the physicality, and it's gonna it's gonna take people to you know put their egos aside and step outside themselves, and for for this thing to work. And uh, judging on the last two games, it looks like that's starting to happen. And as time goes on, I can only expect that that will get better for them. So it, it's it's definitely good for them to go into the um into the Olympic Games coming off two wins, you know, because of the way things started. It um, you know, wasn't really uh wasn't really getting off to a positive note for them. But you know, they they look like they're um they're running in the shape, and you know, I just expect things to get better as as the games progress. All right, Cardo. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried about the women. You know, I expect gold. You know, some of the best uh, men's. Um, they do, as long as they play as a team, you know, um, I still expect them to win gold. They'll just be more competitive. You know, they got two of them dudes right there. I was just about to talk about. You know, you got Dane, you got KD, you got Jason Tatum, uh, you got Zach Levine. Offense isn't the problem. It's, it's, it's how they gel more so defensively with these teams because these teams don't play with their sets and with the versatility of their players. You know what I mean? So, you know, as we saw in a couple of their losses, plus, you know, they have reinforcements coming, you know, with Drew and Devin Booker and Chris Middleton. So, you know, I'm eager to see how, you know, the defensive side of the ball looks for USA once Drew gets there. Uh, they pretty much they made Draymond the starting center in a sense, you know, you know, with him and, you know, Jeremy and obviously Drew's going to have whatever point guard they play of any team they play. Uh, similar to what he's doing with Chris Paul. I just, I just expect, you know, I, I, I just expect them to, to, even though it'd be tougher, I expect them to win go as long as they stay healthy, no COVID situations. You know, I obviously no no physical injuries as far as ankles and knees and something like that. Uh, for them, it, it's just it's just getting chemistry, understand what one another do, and buying in to understand that to win this thing and win a gold medal is it's a different path than winning, you know, in the league. You know, what I'm saying individual players can get you a lot of games in the league. That ain't gonna happen in a, in a FIBA competition, in the Olympic play. Y'all gotta win as a team, and you you gotta from game to game. It might be different. Like one game, hell, KD might be the thirty point per game score. Uh, the next game, he might be the assist guy. The next game, he might be the defensive guy. It's just you sacrificing, you doing whatever is needed to get that win. And that's what I think they're starting to understand, especially in that last game against Spain. So they keep their mentality and, uh, you know, keep the teamwork um, where it needs to be and, and not let egos get in the mix. 
they should be fine. All right, I'd save your thoughts on the men since I know I would only ask you about the women, but go ahead. Yeah, I was like, my bad, I, I forgot something. Uh, but no, oh, yeah. I definitely agree with both y'all. You know, I'm not too, I'm not overly worried about the men. Um, I definitely think these last two games helped solidify some things for them. But yeah, I definitely agree with Carter. Like, I feel like it's definitely going to be a team effort. It's going to be a situation where, like, they're sometimes like they're going to have to realize like they're not the star of the team. So I think that that's probably going to be the biggest thing for them to be able to gel. And I feel like they'll be able to do it. Um, just being able to know like who's on that night, not forcing anything and playing as a complete team um, and definitely making sure that we have no injuries. And I know the last I heard, uh, Zach Levine didn't travel with them to Tokyo due to being in um, COVID protocols. Um, he may have went now. I haven't looked at it again. I, I heard that yesterday. So hopefully situations like that don't continue to arise. You know, if something were to come up where they will lose a player, um, I'm hoping they have a contingency plan for stuff like that. Um, because as we see, you know, with uh, Brad, unfortunately, not being able to play, you know, due to COVID. And then um, I appreciate Kevin Love bowing out gracefully, I'm going to be honest, um, to, 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 to move in somebody else because, you know, he was, you know, it is what it is. But um, honestly, like making sure that Javel is in good straight because, again, we are going to need the height, you know, and, it, you know, not being there for a lot of the time you know hopefully he's able to just jump right in where you know he's able to pick up what they're doing but i, I really don't have any huge worries about them just my biggest worry is just are they going to play as a team are they going to be able to stay together and, and play the game out and just nobody have any egos even though again i don't think they will but again you never know especially with so many young players as far as this being their first time um playing in the olympics but i think you know the vets like KD and um, Draymond will be able to anchor the team. But I, I hope, you know, I really don't have any big worries about them. I just hope that they continue to gel and mesh well and, and be able to play together. All right. Quick, my last thing for you guys, are there any other events y'all are looking to? I'll, I know we're talking about the basketball, but with the Olympics that you guys are really looking forward to? Before we get out Gymnastics. Of here. I got to see my girl, Simone. Yeah. I gotta see her shut uh, it down <laughs> and track and field. Yeah, track All and right. field. I want to see who's gonna take the mantle. I want to see who's gonna take the mantle and swimming. You know, with Michael Phelps not being mm -hmm. there no more, like, and will somebody do it for my country? You know what I mean? Who knows? You know, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm just a fan. Even in track and field, I watch all the track and field. You know, the decathlon yeah. is one of my favorite events. But that's one sport I damn sure. Not only will I not ever do, I'm not, I was never interested in doing all that. Like, and I, that's why I respect it so much. I'm like, look at it. Why are we doing all the running? Like, what's, what's going on? What's the, like, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I only run with a basketball fan, man. That's my only one. <laughs> uh, no, that, yeah, that, that's that, like that, one of my favorite things that. about the Olympics. That's like one of my favorite yeah, it, things about it, the Olympics. Being able to see many, so many different things that you don't get to see normally on TV or they don't get a mm -hmm. lot of publicity or anything. Like, I remember the last Olympics, like, I was watching water polo. I was like, this is interesting as heck. Like, I've never, I don't see enough of it on TV. So, like, when the Olympics come on, like, being able just to see so many different things. And then I'm also looking forward to the new three-on-three -three thing that they're doing as well in the basketball league. So, to see how that's going to shake up, you know, that see how that's going to go. Like, I'm interested to see that as well. Like, they put that in there, you know, I, anything like diving, like, it's all crazy. Like, I'm just like, I can't wait. Like, I'm trying to make sure that I have every different channel that I need to make sure that whatever's <laughs> on that I can watch it. Because, like, you don't get to see stuff like this. Like, this is like a person who plays sports like Dreamland. Like, if you're like a legit, like, just sports person, like, yeah, we have our own particular, like, particular sport you really like to watch but like i just love sports period so like just to watch a bunch of different ones like i'm so excited like i can't wait no yeah um yeah mainly for the um, summer olympics i really just pay attention to of course basketball um and uh and track and field um but yeah, like Octavia said, sometimes like because the things they come on in such weird times, you know, if you're scrolling, mm -hmm. you'll catch something like 
Um, you, you know, what's really interesting to me that I've, that I've watched sometimes fencing. I knew it. That was, was my other one. Like fencing. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's just, yeah. I, um, you know, it, it's captivating to me for some reason, but yeah, man, just, um, just the Olympics as a whole, you know, the, um, just like, you know, I just find it, uh, I just find international sports so different from this country because this, this is their, like, their stage, you know, where we have, you know, professional leagues like NBA, NFL, things like that. I know they have them in other countries as well, but um, this seems to be the pinnacle of their, you know, of their athletic aspirations to compete for their country, you know, and, um, and then just to see them be able to do that, you know, it, it, it's pretty cool, you know, especially and then you get the variety as well. So, um, so yeah, man, the Olympics is always, always cool. And I think uh, even as I've gotten older, like when I was younger, I never used to watch the Winter Olympics. Um, and even the last couple of times I've tuned into that, you know, that, that stuff is pretty interesting too, but, um, but yeah, man, I'm definitely, um, I, I definitely make it a point to keep up with, uh, try to field and basketball and then other things, you know, as time allows, I'll tune in. All right. Cardell, do you want to finish up what you were saying about three on three? No, I, I, when they was doing the uh, trials and, uh, selecting the players, I, I thought it was, you know, regular, like three on three, like how we play. And I was intense. You got to be in shape because literally mm -hmm. when, the, when the ball goes through the net and somebody score or if it's a mess, they pass it back out and they can pass it right back to you when you're passing the score. Like, if you're not <laughs> alert defensively, it, the game be over. So they hustle. It, it don't end. Like, you don't stop moving or, or playing until the game over. And I'm like, yo, I, when I saw how it really was set up, I'm like, okay, yeah. I was like, man, um, <laughs> This this gonna be interesting because your conditioning gotta be up the part. If your condition up the part, you gonna mm -hmm. fade. It, it's it's no mm -hmm. way. It, it, I, I was I, I love the setup because it's gonna be competitive as hell. And I think that's what a lot of people think is three on three, like how we played growing up. Are right, you score here? Check the ball. Let's get back to it. Nah, hey, are right, you score here? Boom, boom. And you could be down 3 0 real quick or something like that. So, um, you know, that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be entertaining. I know people gonna be tripping on Twitter about that, man. You know, so like. <laughs> I gotta get this. I can't wait to see it. But yeah, track and field, basketball, obviously, um, you know, swimming, and, and um, just, those are the three main sports I pay attention to. Yeah, like you guys said, there's gonna be some outstanding performances, like there are every Olympics. So we'll definitely talk about those crazy performances as they pop up. Uh, I want to thank you guys for hanging with us tonight. As always, go enjoy uh, the finals possibly last game or the second to last game, depending on what happens. Either way, the finals will be over by the next time we speak to you on Focus. That's that's what I can guarantee. No matter what happens, <laughs> come next Tuesday, the finals just <laughs> still have a winner. <laughs> it's the only, that's the only thing I can guarantee, right? Uh, so you guys enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget his Olympics open this weekend. Um, you know, got the USA basketball show we're doing on, di on social, on digital. Uh, just follow us, Focus TV on uh all your social media mediums to find out when. Get over to DC TV to check out the show. Not only Sunday, uh, Friday night when it airs at 10 p.m., but uh, it re airs Saturday and Sunday now. So get over to DCTV.org to check that out. And then don't forget to go over to FocusTV.com. Try to get you guys as much content as we can throughout the Olympics. And, you know, Octavia's going crazy. A couple weeks away from training camp. Some teams had the rookies report already, so it's about that time a year already. Again, next week's going to be a whole lot to get through, even more. Y'all enjoy the weekend, enjoy the start of the Olympics, and we'll see y'all very soon. Uh, some of you guys will see you sooner than later, and y'all have a great night.